shoot him in the dog. Alright guys. It is a hot, sticky, pretty much 90 degree day here. 90 degree day and going into the last week of winter here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas. The little dog and I, we're going to head up into the biggest party in the United States going on an hour from here <coughs> in Austin, Texas. Good Lord, but before we join uh, about three million of my clueless, lovable friends, I'm uh, going to check in with the comment section, but not the comment section here on Collapse Chronicles, but on Soft White Underbelly, where, good lord, what I am I? I guess I have my interview from Soft White Underbelly, uh, <laughs> up to close to 9,000 comments. I would say six to 7,000 of the comments calling me, me the clueless moron. Uh, <coughs> calling me a woke lefty. Let's see, what else am I? And obviously saying, uh, you know, the number one comment uh, to take my own advice and kill myself. So apparently, you know, these, these thousands and thousands of clueless morons unable to uh, understand the human language and did not listen to the video. Uh, but this fellow named Richard San Jose, he, apparently Richard mostly liked it, but takes a little bit of issue. And he's talking about, you know, where for years I have been saying the number one problem on the planet is overpopulation, that there's too many humans. But for that interview, I actually, uh, tweaked the number one problem uh, on the planet being too many humans just to, you know, the fact that humans exist at all on this planet. The problem with the planet is humans. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, this is Richard San Jose's response to me claiming that overpopulation is not the number one problem on the planet, but humans are. Well, good lord, that wind is whipping up, I hope. Well, let's see what this does to the microphone. Take it away, Richard San Jose. He, meaning I, <clears throat> he is long-winded. <clears throat> he is long-winded, but absolutely correct. But he missed the problem, so I'm absolutely correct that humans are the problem, but I missed the problem. Hmm. The problem is overpopulation. I am 70, and when I was born in 1954, there were 2.6 billion people, and that was almost three times the sustainable population figure we reached around 1800. Most scientists agree 1 billion is the maximum population. Most scientists. I don't know what Richard's definition of most scientist is. He might have meant to say most population ecologist, but uh, my guess, I I'm just going to take a guess that a tiny fraction of, quote, scientists would agree that the uh, maximum sustainable human population on this planet is one billion. Maybe half of population ecologists would make that claim. Now, we're at eight billion, and the larger that number becomes, the shorter the doubling time. He, meaning I, he is correct that there is no way to save humanity because we have still got the pedal to the metal population-wise 
and we are like a bacteria rafting our way through this planet. If we go quickly, if we go quickly, maybe, just maybe, some of the other animals will survive, and perhaps this planet would have another chance for the rise of an intelligent species. Just cutting births even to zero would not save us, as that is too slow. We need a real zombie virus at 90% kill rate. Hmm. And if we decrease the population to 1 billion in the next 50 years, we would, we would make it, but even then, it would not help as we would just do the same thing again. Well, maybe Richard's going to get his uh, wish. I guess you've seen those many uh, articles out there on the mainstream media today. I was going to share one where they actually call it a zombie virus that these mad scientists, they have, uh, you know, retrieved a virus that has been frozen for about 50,000 years in the former permafrost on the planet, sitting there frozen for 50,000 years, and the, these uh, mad scientists just went into the laboratory. Don't know if the laboratory was in Wuhan, China or not, and they on purpose thawed out the virus and did confirm that it is still very much viable and, uh, and, and, and very much attacks living tissue. Uh, I'm assuming of a mouse and not a human in the experiment, but who knows. And so it sounds like Richard could get his wish that we are going to get a zombie virus with a 90% kill rate that if the mad scientist don't thaw one out for us, then Mother Nature is going to uh, thaw one out uh, for us soon enough, and maybe uh, the melting permafrost will save the planet. But anyway, uh, I digress as I tend to do. Getting back to Richard. Where were we? Uh, all right, ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent of people now have not a clue what is coming. There you go. Otherwise known as clueless morons, he puts the population of clueless morons who have no clue no clue what is coming uh, down the pike on this at 99 percent. I guess I'm in agreement with him. Uh, I, I have noticed a few more people, so uh, I guess out of every 100 people you see, 99 are clueless morons, 1 percent are doomers. All right, 99 percent where am I? Okay. <clears throat> I would give us, meaning humanity, I would give us 50 years max <clears throat> as the oceans are dying and they make up over two thirds of the planet. So, what do they think happens when they run out of their crab cakes? and shrimp and lobster to eat. Yes. <clears throat> Since becoming rich, the Chinese uh, what? The Chinese since becoming rich tanks to a capitalist system 
the Chinese, since becoming rich, tanks to a capitalist system, are now the fastest destroyers of sea life, and the rest of us are busy tossing in plastic water bottles because we are too stupid to see that Nestle's bottled water scam is a scam. There you go. We are not an intelligent species at all. Do you see monkeys lining up to buy water in a bottle for more than gasoline when it is the most abundant resource on the planet? And if we'd quit flushing eight billion turds a day into the sea, along with all our garbage, maybe water would be drinkable again. It's too late, so I will shut up now. It was such a nice planet, too, and apparently a rarity. So why do we keep searching for another Earth-like planet to destroy? Wouldn't, would not it have been easier to just take care of the one we had, as it required no spaceships with warp speed to reach, to reach? Just open up the front door. There you go. Thank you very much. I don't know if Richard San Jose came over and uh, subscribed to uh, Collapse Chronicles or not, but I can't understand about Collapse Chronicles. Okay, when I went into that, uh, when I had that interview a couple of months ago, I had about 5,300 subscribers, and that interview got me, well, about 3,000. 1,300. I've, so I've gained about 3,300 subscribers uh, since that interview, although I notice about 15 of them have disappeared in the past couple of days. Yet what I find is I am getting no more views according, according to the, uh, the, you know, the YouTube uh, little bean counting bots. My subscription rate went up 60%, 60% in the past couple of months, yet if anything, my number of views has gone down since, uh, since that interview. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to make of this, guys. Uh, it sounds like adding, having my, my subscription rate go up 60% if you, if you believe these bean counter YouTube bots. I don't know, guys. Go figure. But I will just keep on doing what I do, chronicling the collapse of a planet and listening to other voices in the doomosphere. I was going to do another uh, medium.com uh, article on the sadness of overshoot, pretty much. Uh, how understanding overshoot can make you sad, but uh, my day has disappeared and I have to go join my clueless, lovable friends, the biggest party on the planet, so maybe I'll get to that tomorrow get out there and, and go join your clueless, lovable friends at the biggest party on the planet while you still can. Bye, guys.